Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. So in this video, we're going to discuss a concept that's important in respiratory physiology, and that's what's called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, or just Dalton's Law. Now, we talked about this in many other playlists because this law is involved in chemistry, physics, physical chemistry. But here we're going to look at just a conceptual approach, and we're going to look at it with respect to the atmospheric gas. Okay, so suppose we have a gas mixture. So that's just a mixture of different gases, and it's composed of several different gases. Carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, water, and then here's something called argon, which you may not have seen before. Um, these are individual gas molecules within the gas mixture, and the reason it's a mixture is because it's a combination of all five of these things. Now, it's not an equal amount of each of these things. If each one of these were equal, they'd each be 20% of the entire gas mixture, but they're all going to have a different relative amount in the mixture. And what's important to understand is that each of these gases exerts a pressure independently of all the other gases. So I'll say that in two ways. For example, carbon dioxide as a gas is going to exert its own pressure independent of any of these four other gases. Okay. Now, one way to conceptualize what that means is, so most of you who are watching these videos are in college, and when you go to college, every course is worth a different number of credit hours. Okay. So, for example, if you look at your entire course load, let's say that adds up to 16 credit hours. Okay. Well, some of your classes might just be one credit hour, some might be three, some may be four. In some institutions and in different programs, you can have classes that are up to seven credit hours. And so, theoretically, a seven credit hour class is going to require a lot more time and is going to exert much more of a challenge than a one credit hour course. Okay. So that's kind of what we mean. So the seven hour course exerts a lot more stress on you, or force on you, so to speak, than the one credit hour or even the three credit hour course. And it's the same kind of thing here. Even though we have a, a, a gas mixture that contains, let's say, these five gases right here, each one of these gases individually is going to exert its own pressure. And these pressures of individual gases are what we call partial pressures. Okay? They're partial pressures because it's not the pressure of the whole gas. It's just the pressure from one of the gases in the mixture. Okay? So if we wanted to talk about just the pressure exerted by carbon dioxide, we would put this lowercase p in front of the chemical, so it would be PCO2. And whenever you see this lowercase p, that implies we're talking about a partial pressure. Okay? And so we can have a partial pressure of CO2, PCO2, we can have a PO2, a PN2, a PH2O, and a P-argon. And the reason I choose these five gases is because they're the most commonly found gases in the atmosphere. Now, you may have seen this before, but the total atmospheric pressure is about 760 millimeters of mercury. This is just a unit we use to quantify pressures, usually when we're talking about atmospheric pressure. Okay? Notice in this pressure, it's a capital P, so it's atmospheric pressure. When I use a capital P, that implies I'm talking about a total pressure. This pressure is a mixture of partial pressures, but if I take that total pressure, Okay. In this case, the total pressure would be atmospheric pressure. It would simply be the sum of each individual partial pressure in the mixture. In other words, if I took the partial pressure of CO2 and added the partial pressure of O2 and so on and so forth with all of these gases in the mixture, then each one of these summed should equal the total pressure, which is going to be my atmospheric pressure. So for example, if we look at the relative percents of each of these gases in the atmosphere, we can, first of all, quantify some things and learn some things, but it's also interesting to note that the most uh, plentiful gas in the atmosphere is actually not oxygen, as you might assume. It's actually nitrogen, N2. Now, N2 doesn't do anything. It will actually go into our blood uh, when we inhale, and it really does nothing. It gets inhaled and then exhaled. Okay? Um, but it's actually 78% of the atmospheric gas. Okay, So 
being 78% of the atmosphere, it's going to occupy 593 millimeters of mercury worth of partial pressure. Notice that this partial pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure because this is only the pressure due to nitrogen gas. The next most plentiful gas is oxygen. It occupies 20% of the atmospheric gas. Okay? And being 20%, it would be expected to have a lower partial pressure than nitrogen. And in fact, our PO2 in the atmosphere is about 152 millimeters of mercury. And so you can play the same game for the other three. Uh, depending on where you are, you can have about 1% water vapor, and that's going to equal about 7.6 millimeters of mercury. Okay. We have a little bit less argon, which is an inert gas. It doesn't do anything, just like nitrogen. It's going to be about 7.372 millimeters of mercury. And then notice we have a very small amount of carbon dioxide, only about three hundredths of a percent. So it's going to be a very small partial pressure. And remember what I said. According to Dalton's law of partial pressure, the sum of each individual gas's partial pressure equals the total pressure. So if I take all these partial pressure values that I just found out from the percentages of the gases in the atmosphere, if I add these, I'm going to get something that is pretty much 760 millimeters of mercury. In fact, if you add these together, you'll probably get something very close to that. Okay? And that's basically what Dalton's law of partial pressure says, is that each individual gas exerts a pressure independently of the other gases. Just like if you have a one credit hour class, that's only a part of your 16 credit hour load, but it's going to provide its own stress independent of your three credit hour class, your four credit hour class, and maybe your seven credit hour class. Okay? I don't even know if that adds up to 16. Okay. And the reason it's also important to talk about this is as we go further into respiratory physiology, we're going to see uh, nomenclature like this a lot, particularly PCO2 and PO2. We're not going to really worry so much about these three, but I just show them because this allows you to add these up to 760. But when we're talking about PCO2, it turns out that when CO2 gets into the blood, a lot of it's actually going to be there as a gas. Same thing as oxygen. It's actually dissolved in plasma as a gas, at least some of it. Okay? And so when we talk about these things, we're actually talking about their partial pressures. Okay? So I just wanted to make that perfectly clear. And hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. In the next video, we're going to continue more with our study of respiratory physiology. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.